Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Welcome and thank you for joining Sister Power. Our topic for this episode, Raising the Bar for Millennials. That's brand, audience, and revenue. Today's Sister Power VIP guest, Ashley M. Williams, is the leading millennial strategist, spokesperson, consultant, and speaker for brands that want to reach millennials. Helping brands to create the right campaigns, craft the right messages, and produce events that bring brands and millennials together. She is founder and CEO of Rizar. Welcome to Sister Power, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Karen. Oh, I'm so excited too. I'm so glad we had this opportunity to talk mm -hmm. about what you do. And before we get started talking about uh, brand, audience, and revenue for the millennials, mm -hmm. helping them to raise the bar, people always ask me, where and how do you meet these amazing women? And so we met at the AEO 2018 Micro Business Conference. And, and you're in Detroit, Michigan, right? Correct, yep. Yeah, that's where we met. And you won $10,000. Yeah, that was really, I was like so, uh, it was gonna the rap. Well, as you guys are probably going to talk about what the what we had to do, I was really nervous about it, and so I was so shocked and so thankful um, to for the opportunity. And it was just really life changing. It was really nice. Well, tell us how very quickly, and you can't see it right now, but we have you up on the screen with um, Jessica Norwood, <laughs> who is the president and CEO of Project Runway. Tell us very quickly how you won the ten thousand dollars. I love Jessica. She's so sweet. So what we had to do as part of, because with pitch competitions, you normally, you know, go through your pitch in like a template or like a PowerPoint presentation. But this time they actually want us to do it through a rap song. So we had to go through, um, we had like an advisor that we worked with with helping us to craft our message that they allowed us to work with. And uh, we had to showcase like our problem solution, all the different components of our company, our attraction, and a, and a rap song. And as you probably can tell, I don't necessarily rap that much, so. But you won. Um, it was five contestants was and four of them were men. Yes, and I was the only female. And so um, I had to take my own music and everything to match with the words I was saying. And I practiced and practiced and practiced. I just like tried to get it, everything down to like the very, you know, each beat as much as I could. So it was a little nerve wracking, but it worked out. Oh, I'm glad. Well, moving forward, let's talk a little about about your organization, Rizar. Tell me about Rizar. Yeah. yeah so the word Rizar actually comes from this a Spanish word, Rizar, which means to ripple, and we're based on the idea of the ripple effect of how one person can really use their thoughts or their actions to make an impact. And I really wanted to connect with this idea of encouraging my generation and the future generations that regardless of where you come from or your circumstances, you have your life has power and meaning and what you do, what you say really can impact someone else. So our goal is to become the largest collection of millennial creators. And when we say creators, we mean content creators that mm -hmm. they're making um, articles, videos, podcasts, um, photos, and they submit those on the platform. And then we also work with brands through our, our marketplace, as what we call it, the millennial marketplace, and helping to um, do social campaigns around the content that these millennials are creating. Or they come to us and say, we have this uh, particular idea, initiative, or awareness that we're trying to get out. Can you help us by connecting us with your creators to make content that can flow with that idea um, for social media or their digital properties? And we also do an event series where we connect with millennials um, in person uh, through brands that we work with like Microsoft, Apple, or WeWork, um, and allowing them to have those experiences that we have on the platform in live form. Oh, wow. That sounds exciting. And I can't wait uh, for Rizar and Sisters in Par and Hawaii to work together. And you, you yeah. do accept clients from all over the world. So that, that's wonderful yeah. for the millennials. Yeah. Well, let's, let's yeah. just talk a little bit about um, brand, 
audience and revenue. And a question I have for you, what does society get wrong about millennials today? You know, I think that there's always a stigma that we're uh, very entitled and narcissistic and that, you know, we have the attention span of a fishbowl <laughs> or a, a goldfish, I should say. Um, and at certain points, that can be true. I mean, there are, I definitely think that there are some of those in our generation who could be that way. But the majority of us are very passionate about changing the world and finding ways of using things that have not worked in the past in order to make things better and to really make purpose, make impact. So we are really um, gung-ho in making sure that brands really work in order to get our buying power. So it's not just that they're advertising to us, but they're actually showing us how their product, service, or brand entirely is making an impact in the world. And therefore, that's why we should support um, them in buying from their, their, their company. Wow, that's great. Well, how do you build a brand that attracts your ideal client? I think part of it is that um, we really position ourselves in being very purposeful um, in everything that we do. It's, it's all about purposeful marketing for us, which is like the uplifting of one's spirit, um, one being overall of who they want, who they aspire to be. So for us, we really want to, not every brand or client is going to be the the right client for us necessarily. So we're looking to work with clients that really align with either wanting to change that persona about themselves in that way or that are really doing that. Um, and so we are very meticulous on making sure that the messaging that we are able to align with with the brand also aligns with what we do as a company. Wow, that's wonderful. Well, give us a little bit of background. Of, and I, I did read that you graduated from USC, University of Southern California. Yep, yep. It, and I worked there briefly in the journalism department many, many, many years ago. Oh Excellent my gosh, school. That's so crazy. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about why you're the <laughs> expert and what you do. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so crazy. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things is that um, from journalism school, especially, they, I, I was really um, grateful for the opportunity to attend there and to be taught um, really well in terms of what is needed to craft a story, make it engaging, mm -hmm. um, and also to really um, shape lives at the same time as you're creating stories for that. My background is I used to be a reporter. So one of the things that I really wanted to do with crafting stories for brands is to make sure that we're taking the messages of journalism and, and the idea of how the power of content creation can be through what we um, target brands with, with purposeful marketing. So everything that we do in terms of crafting that story, we're still telling a story, but we make it so that it's really for the uplifting of the millennial life and helping the brand to uplift the millennial at the same time. So whether it's personal finance or through um, finding the best career fit that they might want to do or dining, anything or traveling, everything has to be towards telling a story that's Ooh. really engaging and really um, captures their, their spirit. Oh, wonderful. Well, what are the best ways to engage millennials in the workplace? Yeah, and it's, it's funny what I did when you asked me the question earlier about one of the things people get wrong. I think, especially in the workplace, there is this idea that we um, want things to go quickly in our career and that we want to move up to the top and uh, just want everything right now. When in reality is most millennials, uh, especially from research shows, they want to be mentored. We want to be mentored. We want to be groomed into becoming who it is that we want to be. And yes, um, we are willing to work hard for that. And we understand that, um, you know, many of us don't even take vacations. There's research that shows like we, because we are, we want to make sure that we have our jobs and that we're doing a good job. And we also don't want to uh, not I guess be up to par. So we're very hard workers. We're wanting to be mentors. And I think that if organizations would really understand those concepts, especially the idea that we are very entrepreneurial, even though many of us don't necessarily go into being entrepreneurs, but they can incorporate um, entrepreneurial things within their organizations to really um, drive millennials to be loyal to their organization, to want to improve it and at the same time use their leadership to really groom them into becoming leaders for their organization and, um, and then giving them breaks in between, giving them things that are really um, helping them to want to be at work all the time. So I think that would really be helpful. So I think 
just overall, we're hard workers, but we just want it to be where we're we're being impactful and we can make an impact, but we also want to be groomed at the same time. Oh, I like that. So you want to keep it fresh, but also you're willing to um, learn from, you know, seasoned entrepreneurs. Exactly, exactly. And see, it's a win-win situation, and I think that people should get that. Mm -hmm. I, it, just like we were talking before the uh, cameras are rolling, that I am interested yeah. in hearing what the millennials are doing to make my business even better. Yeah, that's exactly. And I feel like we really, um, it's funny because uh, Simon um, Sinek had this uh, video that went viral last year about how millennials want to leave organizations because they want to make an impact or whatever, and then they get irritated when they can't. But I mean, let's talk about like the positives of that, though, yeah. the fact that millennials are saying they don't just want to be there, they don't just want to take a paycheck, they actually want to contribute something meaningful. So I think that's great. Like, why is that such a bad thing? Like, give them more things to do where they can really shape your organizations and so many brands know and really now like i think 75 percent of the workforce at this point is our millennials so it's why don't you incorporate those things of them and really allowing them to really shape your organization i you like know? that what well, uh, ashley how do you build relationships and recurring revenue mm -hmm. i think that one of the main things is um definitely reaching out to organizations and um, brands that seem to be noted in the media or to be discussing things that they're already doing with millennials or want to or the needs that they have to reach that millennial consumer i think that um continuously putting out content that we do like on linkedin or even our other social media um channels is really important to help with letting people know who we are and as we grow we really want to do even more things on our end with multimedia to build those relationships and actually even incorporating some brand brands in those conversations that were like on podcasts or videos and interviewing them about what their needs are how things are going and making that where it's more of a, a driving conversation for how we both can help um how we make the relationship work for each other because at the end of the day our goal is to really again help transform millennials and make them be able to see that they can have this positive life and helping them to get there and bridge that gap. So we want to work with brands and making it be um, mutually beneficial for them to be able to showcase their products and services that can help millennials get there and to reach that great life that they aspire to have as well. Oh, I like that. I like that. Uh, what are the best ways to garner the loyalty of millennials? I think consistently doing things around issues that are important to millennials. I think one of the things is that millennials definitely want to have a voice, but they are so passionate about changing the world and using their lives, like having more purpose um, in what it is that's happening and really taking hold of that change. So I think brands really need to incorporate, as they're marketing their products and services, um, taking hold of different issues that millennials really care about, whether it's you know, things dealing, especially with the bank student loans, like figuring Ooh. out ways where they can really showcase how they're going to help, help millennials to tackle those um, and to be able to be their supporter alongside them in doing so, or whether it's through traveling and helping them to um, do so in like cost-effective ways. So I think there's, there's a lot of things that could be incorporated with the issues that millennials care about and marketing towards those issues, giving them a voice to do so. I like that. So uh, I've got three pieces of plastic in my wallet. I have my <laughs> personal business card. Uh, I have my personal debit card, my business debit card, and my driver's <laughs> license. What three tools is essential to build your brand audience and revenue? I definitely think, I love that question. I definitely think having a social media presence is really important. Okay. Um, I think that having some type of multimedia that you are using, whether it's your a website where you can write articles, whether it's um, you have like a video camera where you can shoot video of yourself and then put that on the social media channels um, or a podcast, like you need to have some form of where people can get to know you as a person as well as your company. Um, and I also think Definitely having um, a newsletter or some type of incorporation where you're consistently engaging with your audience through like a message that you would send throughout like a platform or the newsletter would be really important as well. 
Wow, that's excellent advice. And I always tell people when, I, when I'm speaking around the city that as soon as you walk out the door, you are representing your brand, no matter what it is, even if it's a yes. smile. Um, I mean, that's from being the president of your company to the hairdressers to a physician. Yes. Yeah, you know, you are that's what true. you are your organization, whatever it may be. So true. Oh my gosh, I remember when I was one of my first um, jobs, they, were, they would get books all the time. And one of the books that I found was called You Are the Brand. Ooh. And I love it, that book. And it's so, it talks all about what you were just saying. And I didn't realize that at the time because I was just starting my career. But it really hit me about how you know you're you're walking you're walking your brand every day. <laughs> I like that. And the name of the book was "You Are Your Brand." Or, yeah, you are the brand. You, I believe it's what it's called. You are the brand. So, Ashley, how long have you been in business? So we're going on our third year now. Wow. Kind of, it went by really quickly. <laughs> Okay, yeah. three years, so you're almost almost there. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, Ashley, and we are going to come back and continue the conversation about raising the bar, brand audience, and revenue. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner. And I'm Beatrice Cantillo. And we have come in this series, young and old alike, to take a look at our past, your past, and the fastest not seen history books. History books are his story, and what we refer to as mirrors of the past. But we as colonized people, indigenous peoples, and people of color, look into the mirror and do not see ourselves there. On the ties that bind, we will examine those underlying causes. Please join us with the ties that bind on Wednesdays at noon, twice a month. We look for you there. Aloha. Aloha. Hey, how come he gets to go in? He's a service dog. Well, I could get a vest too. You're not even a service dog. He's trained to assist his owner. Well, I can do whatever he can do. Wow, did he just open the door? Yep. Oh, I can't do that. I can't do that either. He's trained for over two years to become a service dog. Man, I wish I could be a service dog. Welcome back to Sister Power, and we are chatting it up with Ashley M. Williams, and she is the CEO of her organization, Rizar. Am I pronouncing Thank it correctly? For... Oh, yes. Uh-huh. Okay, so Rizar. Yeah, and the name of this episode is Raising the Bar, Brand, Audience, and Revenue, which is for millennials. We're raising the bar for millennials, and she is the person to talk to. And Ashley is definitely available <laughs> to people, and we'll show her contact information that you can definitely contact her. And if you want to raise the bar for millennials, I know for sure Sisters Empowering Hawaii, Hawaii Foremost Women's Empowerment Organization, is definitely going to be working with Ashley. So thank you very much for partnering with um, Sisters Empowering Hawaii and Sister Power. So we were talking about raising the bar, yeah. So let's chat about, uh, Ashley, how are millennials probably going to change the world? I literally believe, well, this is the thing, this is this was what's crazy to me as we were, as we were focusing on um, this demographic. I w I'm so excited about my generation and and inspiring them or finding ways to in, where we can all inspire each other because they equally I feel are inspired by them. Um, but one of the things that really struck me is all of the different critical things that are happening in the world in terms of education, finances, um, marriage, like all the things that are happening with millennials in the United States are happening in the majority of other countries where millennials are too. It's crazy. And it's like all the news stories connect with, they're all, we're all dealing with all these similar things with career stuff and everything. So one of the things that I really believe is that we will find ways, since brands are really figuring out how to, or trying to figure out how to get our buying power, we are really disrupting and finding ways of how we are allowing brands to basically enter into our lives. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things that we are, the ways that we're going to change the world is 
how brands, and we're already doing it, but really how brands work with us and continue to target us, even as we have kids, we get married, um, as we go through our older years, because the thing is, they have to work again for our buying power. It's more purposeful marketing. We're going to change the way they market. And I think for some brands, it's kind of like, um, really shocking. It could be a little bit disturbing because they're like, oh my gosh, how, what are we going to do? But the thing is, it's not complicated. It's really mm. taking a look at your values, your reputation as a brand, and understanding how are you really positioning yourself. So we're actually making the brands better by still telling them, we don't want you to just uh, market your product. You need to show us how you are actually going to change, improve the world, improve our lives for the better, future generations for the better in every area, whether through sustainability, education, climate change, all these different things, they're going to have to really focus on shifting that. And then and for, as far as the workplace goes, um, gosh, I mean, it, it, there's so many things dealing with how millennials want to work. They want to work remotely many times. Yes. Um, how they're changing the dynamics of leadership programs and how they're changing it where brands really need to have a lot more things dealing with corporate responsibility programs, which goes into marketing initiatives, you know? So it's, it's all of those dynamics. Um, and also even making it, I believe that we'll probably be more amped to allow the younger generations to really have more leadership roles, those coming up the Generation Z after us, because we realized that we were kind of shunned from um, being able to really have a voice sometimes as we were beginning our career. So we're more amped to allow the younger people to really take hold and to really create change. Um, and additionally, even going into education, there's a lot of things dealing with student loans is our, I believe are going to change where we're going to um, really force universities to uh, make it so that education is more affordable because at the end of the day, we're seeing it's not going to be paying off for us. We're not going to want to put our kids in. I mean, of course, we want our kids to be educated, but, you know, we're going to be more mindful of how we go about getting their education for them or even gun control in the classrooms and really, you know, doing that or um, meat. There's, I mean, every industry, meat, the meat industry and how meat is treated and how we get our food and holistic eating. It's like every single thing is changing because we really wanted to improve. And again, it, gives, it goes back to being more purposeful, helping us and empowering our lives. Sorry, that was a huge tangent. But. Oh, look, you've covered all the <laughs> important areas, and that brings <laughs> me to a very important question. How do millennials want to be inspired and motivated? Yeah, I think, you know, I think sometimes with politics, from what it was at certain times, I think they they really want to be amped to feel as if they can create change. And I know I keep saying, going back to the creating change part, but I really want to emphasize that because I think what happens many times is that so many of the, uh, the generations before us kind of make us feel as if they want us to create the change, but then at the same time, it's almost like, but stay where you are, you're still young, you don't know anything. So we want those generations to be able to push us to being like, okay, we know that you guys are like the majority of the population now. Go ahead. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to take hold of? And I think we're seeing that more now, especially in the political parties, where a lot of millennials are really uh, feeling this. And so they're running for positions in leadership or um, even uh, yeah, like local to be local governors, all these different things. Like they're feeling more amped to take part of the conversation. So I feel like if the generation can keep encouraging us, those that see that eventually they want the world to improve and they really want it to keep um, keep improving, to encourage us to take part in those conversations and don't shun us, but to empower us. Ah, you know, I like that. It's all about empowering, motivating, educating, and and inspiring. And so, yes. how can millennials become their best selves? I really believe. It's funny that um, we're talking about this question too. One of my uh, best friends, or actually many of my, my best friend and other people I've connected with recently who are millennials, are really trying to focus on the next step in their career or the next step in their life and trying to really get towards what it is that they aspire to do and using their passions to um, use that to create a, a life for themselves in terms of the career that they go for go forth in. And I think one of the things is, is to really be honest and truthful with themselves about what it takes in order to get to that um, aspirational life or the passions that they want to live. 
and understanding that it's a process. I've had to learn this myself through building Rosar and still am. Sure. But realizing that, um, you know, it's a journey. But if you're truthful with yourself and you're you you're willing to be honest with the passions that you have and don't like keep saying that you eventually want to do something. Because the thing is, time is ticking. We don't like tomorrow's not promised. We don't know. You don't know how many years you're going to be on this earth. So use this time that you have to really say to yourself, am I living my honest truth? Am I really going after my purpose, living in my purpose? And if not, why am I scared of the risk? Am I scared of, I mean, what is, what is it that's causing you not to do that? And then as you go forward in that, don't be discouraged by how, how hard the process is to get to where you want to be or how long it might take or that you don't have the skill set that you need. Be willing to be patient and to be pers- to have perseverance um, and knowing that eventually what it is that you want to do and that, per- that impact that you want to make through your purpose will happen, but you just need to be consistent and never give up. Wow, I like that. I mean, you know, you're, you're saying good information that is a takeaway for everyone. And, you know, you. If time is almost over. What I would like mm-hmm. to ask you, Ashley, and before we leave is, what do millennials really want out of life? I think it's because we really want to be happy. <laughs> okay. And I lie with that. But I mean, I mean, but happy in the sense that, like, you know, I, again, it goes, many times people say that we're entitled, that we don't want to work hard. But the thing is, we, we really try to do things the right way. We were told that if you got an education, you went to school, you had this X amount of this X type of journey, things would pan out. And what ended up happening was the stock market crashed, many people couldn't find jobs, they had student debt, like all these things were happening. So what we really want is to be able to say like the path that we were trying to reach and the career that we aspire to have or to different careers that we aspire to have is they're become they become possible and that we can learn as we go and become who it is that we aspire to be along the way. And that, you know, basically the purpose that we're aiming for, we can create. And the the life that we want, we can create. And I think sometimes we become discouraged because we thought that we could create it and that we were trying to, and all of a sudden all these things started happening that were out of our control. So it's like, how do you get back to being that way? And so just being, being happy and being, I think, being empowered to do that is what we're looking for. Well, my motto is, before we close, I always say this is something to look forward to. And Ashley, thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. And we want to thank our audience, sure, for spending your time with us. Oceans of aloha, peace, and love.